Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, thanks for being here today. And I, we've had some discussion today about labeling uh, with regard to uh, protein beef specifically. And I want to continue on that line of discussion, if that's all right. Sure. Uh, of course, you get it. Uh, you know, folks in cattle country have some discomfort uh, with the FSIS label of uh, product of the USA. And I think there is some comfort level on a lot of the AMS quality claims and of some of these process verified programs uh, like uh, certified Angus beef. I'm not sure there's that same sense of accuracy and validity with regard to the product of the USA. Now, you have told us that you've got uh, an idea about how to proceed. I want to make sure I heard that right. Uh, and then if you've got any idea about a timeline or what the, pro what the way forward might look like, I'd be interested in that. Yes, we, uh, I think we're in a serious discussion. This is something we've been talking about for a number as we hear the concerns, obviously, uh, uh, as you know, from cattle country, uh, they don't quite understand why we can't just go back to cool, and uh, you all do, uh, but it's a very politically popular, uh, populist type of thing that's not, uh, not going to happen unless we want to do a billion dollar uh, litigation damage with uh, Mexico and Canada. We're trying to thread the needle, honestly, with transparency so the consumer can know what they get while also helping the producers to feel like they're getting value for uh, cattle that have been uh, uh, processed, grown, and processed here. And so the, the, what would the label, I mean, if you've got something that wasn't fully a product of the USA, as you look to thread that needle, what would be the new label I think that the you mentioned? Choice, the choices, excuse me for interrupting, I, yeah. I think the choices go to, uh, the industry would love to have born, slaughtered, and processed in the United States. That, we believe, would violate the WTO uh, a suspension agreement. Uh, we think there's a middle ground of slaughtered and processed here, which is a different distinction than just processed in the United States. As it currently is, um, imported meat could come in, and if you cut it up and package it, that means processed in the United States. But slaughtered and processed means that live animal was here, and it was slaughtered and processed here in the United States. I think that's a better, better deal. And I, I, I agree that the consumer deserves some of this additional information. And what you're talking about really does provide the consumer with a better insight into what, uh, what is going on with that particular beef product. And those would be voluntary labels also. Okay. So moving to the Brazil issue, uh, you know, there's been a fair amount of, I mean, in shoregrass country, I'm not sure people understand exactly what's happening uh, with uh, allowing Brazil to, to import beef into the United States. Can you talk to me a little bit about what processes are we putting into place to make sure that the American consumer can have confidence that Brazil has it right? Because as you know, Mr. Secretary, there have been a number of times in the past when Brazil has not had it right. And I think that really should give comfort, Congressman, and that we've suspended them because they didn't get it right. They've had uh, difficulty and fraud in their uh, inspection system, and when we detected that on inbound inspections, uh, we suspended them. have suspended them for over two years, I think. But in countries where we have trade agreements there, uh, aside from other just outright protectionism, uh, we have to have equivalent safety standards. That's what FSIS does. They go down and do audits of their food safety inspection system to make sure that they believe it's equivalent to U.S. systems. And then as a safeguard beyond that, we also have an, uh, a stepped-up inspection, not an audit, but an inspection of the product coming in to make sure they are continuing to comply. And do we have a sense of how long that heightened inspection regime will be in place? Uh, not necessarily. I think it will be dynamic as we see continued compliance over a, uh, over a period of months or years. Uh, you probably can see some relaxation to see that they've, uh, they're continuing to comply. Well, if my time is getting short, Mr. Secretary. I would close with just a, a couple of thank yous. I mean, you did work with a number of us to move the cover crop uh, prevent plant harvest date last year during a true emergency situation. Of course, we don't know exactly what the weather in 2020 is going to look like, but if we get another terrible situation, hopefully there will be an open, uh, an open mind at USDA about similar flexibility for producers. I am, uh, and then uh, finally, I am hearing increasingly 
from uh, school nutrition experts that they really feel like they have a partner at USDA to try to get it right. I know you've got an open rulemaking. I don't expect you to, to comment at length, but, but thank you for, for your work, sir. Well, we hear the same thing where the trash can's not quite as fat as it once was. 